Ties and Companions by Watch House is going to be played in standard tuning and comes out of G shape formations. In this tutorial, I will be showing you the main rhythm guitar part of the chords. I'll also be showing you a second acoustic guitar part that I can hear primarily in the left channel of the album recording from Such Jubilee that is kind of more of a riffy uh, lead guitar. And not really lead, but it's a separate part that is taking place. There's also a mandolin taking place in the recorded version of this song, which I don't have a mandolin, so I'm not showing you anything there. Usually whenever they play this live, uh, you've got mandolin, one mandolin and one acoustic guitar uh, instrumentation going on. So, the intro. to be begin with your second finger on the six string three fret. Your second finger will be muting out the five string. You'll have an open four string, an open three string. Your ring finger will be on the two string three fret. Your pinky finger will be on the one string three fret. You'll start by plucking the six string and then you're going to be striking strings four, three, and two. Just down strums. And you're kind of, uh, you're feeling it as a one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and that sort of feel where you're primarily emphasizing the upbeats, one and two and three and four. And so you're going, and then you're going to emphasize the open four string before you switch to the next chord, which is a C chord, moving your second finger to the five string three fret so you're going and then put your first finger down on the four string two fret plug that and then pull off your first finger so that the four string rings out and that's how you're getting most of what's going on in the song Now, once the rhythm really kind of starts to kick in, it's more of a two beat bass feel where you're alternating like six string, hit, four string, hit, six string, hit, four string, hit in this G chord. also hear some kind of feathered rhythm notes that I'm playing where I'm going like down 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 up down 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 up down 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 up down 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 up down down that sort of stuff that feel comes in a good bit too down down up down 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 up down 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 up down 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 up down It's not necessarily doing any one of those rhythms all the time or at any specific time. It's just a very loose rhythmic right wrist. As long as you keep counting one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And some of those subdivisions are the eanda of a sixteenth notes like one and two eanda one and two eanda one two and two. So that's the rhythm that you're going for. And the intro and the verse is just alternating between that G and that C with the little pull off. Sometimes you might want to lead back into that G by putting your first finger on the six string one fret first and hammering on to the six string three fret. Whenever we get to the chorus. Sometimes I will say that the acoustic guitar sounds to go walking from the six string three fret to the five string two fret to the five string three fret in that C chord. The chorus is going to be a D chord. 
So you've got an open four string, your first finger is pulled back to the three string two fret, your ring finger is on the two string three fret, and then your second finger would go down on the one string two fret. Here, your two beat rhythm is going between the open four and the open five. So like, and then you're gonna to go to an E minor. That's gonna be second finger on the five string two fret, ring finger on the four string two fret, you'll be hitting the open six string and alternating between like the open six and the fretted five between your strums. So chorus D to the E minor to the C chord. The C chord in the um, chorus is going to be a full fleshed out C chord. I've got my ring finger on the six string three fret, my pinky finger on the five string three fret, your second finger on the four string two fret, an open three string, your first finger on the two string one fret, and an open one string. And here you're kind of alternating between the five string and the six string. The second time the D chord gets played, it gets played like this. So it's our C shape just pushed up two frets. Ring finger on the six string five fret, pinky finger on the five string five fret, second finger on the four string four fret, open three string, First finger on the two string three fret, open one string. Here you're alternating between the five string and the six string with your strumming hand. And then the chorus terminates back into the C chord. And there's a little bit of a riff that happens in the C chord. It goes C, and then you lift your second finger and expose the open four string so that you can emphasize that note put it back down. So you're going. And then open it back up. Then go to the C, uh, the five string three fret where your pinky finger is. And then go with your second finger to the five string two fret. So that we're basically walking down out of this C. now instead of being full chords just kind of this G with your ring and your pinky on bottom moving just your second finger to alternate between the G and the C notes with your hammer on and pull off not hammer on but your pull off with your first finger there on the four string two fret there's a second guitar part that you can hear in the left channel on the album version it sounds to me like it's coming out of C-shaped formation. So if it is, that means that it must be capoed on the seventh fret of the guitar to get it in the key of G. Um, that's the way I'm playing it here. I might be hearing it wrong, but this definitely gets the job done. So capo on the seventh fret of the guitar and then make a C chord. That's what most of these uh, little riffs are coming out of. From this point forward now, I'll speak of chords and frets as though the capo is the nut. And even though this is really like fret 10, I'm gonna call it fret three, one, two, three. So make your C chord and you'll strike the five string three fret. And then you'll do that. Five string three fret, hammer on with your second finger to the four string two fret, and then pull right back off to re-expose the four string. Also the strumming pattern here, it's just, it's something along these lines. Honestly, I, I, it's something that I'm just kind of feeling. But it's it's an alternation of just kind of single down strokes and one e and does like sixteenth notes. Down down up down up down up down down up down up down 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 up down up down up down down up. So that sort of stuff. And you can hear that the down ups are really just kind of feathered notes like light notes where I'm using my downs to emphasize wherever my ring or second fingers, uh, wherever my ring or second fingers are. So we've got the C chord and we've done that. And then we go back to the C note. Then you strike the open four string. And then hammer on twice to the four string two fret. 
And then it sounds to me like it goes ring finger to the five string three fret, hit that, and pull off to the open five, and then hit the open four behind it. So we've got so far very slowly. I'm sorry, I already messed it up. Here we go. And then, so hammer on to the five string three fret with your ring finger. Then hammer on. Hammering on twice. And then pluck and pull off. And then ring finger to the five string three fret. And then open up the five string. And then it rolls back up to that C note by going and it repeats the riff again. That is an open five string, second finger to the four string, I'm sorry, second finger to the five string two fret, ring finger to the five string three fret. When the second guitar gets into the verse, I'm just playing a C chord, then pulling off to uh, my second finger on the five string two fret from ring finger where it was on the five string three fret and then going to like an A minor seven shape chord. So I've got an open five string, second finger on the four string two fret, open three string, first finger on the two string one fret. And then come back up. And then the chords for the chorus, uh, I'm going to basically, it would be a G shaped chord here that I'm playing with ring finger on five string, um, with ring finger on four string, five fret, open three string, and first finger on two string, three fret. And then go to the A minor chord, and then F chord. My ring finger is on the three, uh, the four string, three fret, and open three string, first finger on the two string, one fret. And then repeat the G chord to the F chord. And then I'm going, I'm sliding up to the five string. Uh, I'm sliding up to the five fret on the four string, down to the three fret on the four string, two fret on the four string, open the four string, and then back in the C position. And that is happening while the other guitar is moving out of C position back down to a G. So those are the chords and the movements for how to play Old Ties and Companions by Watch House. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how to approach the song.